simply getting started. Cause we ain't got no time to waste, I don't mind. Hey, what is up, guys? We're going to be doing a... It's not really a tier list. It's kind of like units you should sub it for that are limited or collabs that if they get reruns or when they get reruns, you should definitely pick them up on their own banner, if not the custom banner. Now, I'm not going to be rating collab units over limited units, mainly because they're all kind of limited in their own way. Obviously, collab units might take a little bit of priority to some people, but I feel like Epic 7 is in a good place where we'll most likely get every unit, again, rerun every year, for the, hopefully for the game's life cycle. Which is a good thing, because that, that means that they're doing good things uh, with their game. Now, for FMA, that's a little bit questionable, depending on the money they make. So I don't know if Edward will come back, but I think he should. Uh, whether it's next year or the year after, I, I think a lot of these units should be getting reruns. So, without further ado, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to like button and subscribe. And before we get started, uh, the only reason I'm doing this video instead of something else is because I am Wyvern farming right now, and that's my excuse. So... Once again, I'm not going to have collapse take place over limited units because I feel like there's an argument to be made for both. But I will explain uh, why they're in the top 7 list or why they're in the optional and or artifact list before we get started. So anything that's in the top 7, I feel like should be a must summon. Like, just pull one copy at least without even thinking about it. Don't hesitate to summon because they're very they're true and tested and always good. Obviously, new units that come out, uh, those are going to have to be tested kind of like FMA, but without, you know without us knowing that's hard to say and the ones that are in optional picks or artifact uh or in the artifact doesn't mean they're bad it's just more a playstyle preference and if you're artifact chasing so if a unit is very very good but they're not in top seven it's, but i put them in artifact uh or i talk about them because of their artifacts that's why they're in that slot so let's go ahead and get started i don't know how i want to do this because i didn't really plan out my one two three four five seven because i want to do this on the spot so it feels more stressful so yeah, so here's the units we have that are limited. Uh, all right here. So I guess what we're going to start doing is I'm going to try to put them in the... and from bottom to the top, and if I have to, I'll boot them off or put them on the same par with each other because they're equally as valuable. So let's go ahead and start up with number one. Uh, I feel like number one is obvious. Rimuru. Remiro is just a must summon, a must grab because of how good he is fundamentally, and he's still, he still, he, I don't think he's going to be a unit that just ages out because of how good he is. Um, he's definitely aged slightly, but that's just because they've released a lot of powerful units to keep up with him. Not more so he's getting bad, it's just they've made powerful units to keep up with him, right? Or, or slightly on par or better than him, right? So Remiro is the number one here. I feel like out of all these units, having Remiro is a big priority because of how good he is PvP. Now, this is not just exclusively a PvP tier list. I will be putting units up there that are also good in PvE, right? Uh, number two, I think, should go to Landy. Uh, ironically, another green unit. I might jump her down to three. We'll see. Uh, Landy is a PvE goddess and a PvP usable unit. The fact that she's usable in both PvP and PvE and she's, got a, and she's limited is something that speaks value. I look at the full game as a game, not just all. Oh, you summon this unit for PvP, you summon for this unit for PvE. I like units that have multi, uh, universal, like, or they're, that they're that are good in multiple content, right? Having that value and being good and very, very good in PvE content, will be very, very good in PvP content, just makes that unit just even more worth it to build, because that means you're putting resources into a unit that's going to help you across multiple things across the game instead of just one thing, where Rimuru is just kind of a PvP-based unit. He's just too crazy to not put it number one, right? So Landy is my number two. Uh, number three is going to be a tie between Deanne and Amelia. Because they're doing the same job, they're just slightly different. Amelia has natural healing, but is missing some things that Deanne has. But Deanne is also, you know, able to heal with artifacts. So they're kind of similar because they're role covering the same role. And they're both pretty much built for PvP. But because of that, I feel like it's hard for me to say one is better than the other. Obviously, Deanne is 10 speed faster than Amelia, which does take an, you know take an impact in the game to a lot of people. Like, speed is just master race for a lot of people. So that is why I'm putting them up there together. Now, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying 10 speed, uh, Amelia is 10 speed slower than Deanne, right? So that's why I'm going to put them together because I feel like they're too equal to separate. And it would be kind of a... 
biased if I put one over the other, but I do think most people think now Deanne is better, but there are still Amelia loves out there, Amelia lovers out there, so I can't, like, deny the fact that she isn't, like, a must-summon if you want to go for her. I personally skipped her this year, but I skipped the ReZero collab overall because I just... They didn't really appeal to me, and if I could do it again, I think I might have picked up Amelia. So, lesson learned. All right, going to number four, number four, number four. Uh, out of all these units, I'm gonna put Seaside Bologna there. I feel like she, she I feel like she deserves a spot at the top, uh, in the top four at least, or top five. Seaside Bologna is a very good PvP unit, and she's a very good PVE unit, which again has value in my eyes when it comes to overall use. The crazy thing is, even on top of that, her artifact is legitly good, and I wish I had it. So whenever she comes back around, I might powder her artifact because how good it really is. So there's multiple reasons why you should grab this unit. One, she's good in PvP. Two, she's very good in PvE. And three, her artifact, yes, it's a whale-heavy artifact. You need to plus 30 it. I wouldn't say whale-heavy. It's just a time-consuming like thing you're going to have to do with your potions to put in. But getting... She hits all three of the boxes, right? So, for that reason, I do want to put her on that number 4 spot, because I do think she is a must summon, and you should definitely pick her up, because there's no reason why you should skip her when her artifact and her is so, like, valuable across the board. Now, has she aged a bit in PvP? Absolutely, she's had, she's got a little age on her, but she's still definitely usable. She's got a counter AoE defense break, uh, her ultimate uh, prevents the enemy from being able to heal, and her S1 lowers hit rate. Like, there's a lot of value in that, it's just nowadays... Units have more in their kit, like they have additional, you know, things in their kit. So there's a possibility that she gets buffed on her next rerun, or like right before her next rerun, right? Just because she has a little age, but she's still holding up. So there's always that reason that they should. There's there's always a reason to buff her slightly more if they need to, if they if it provides the uh, uh, players better overall quality of life on using her, right? I I, I feel like she's in that situation where. They could definitely buff her, and as long as they don't overdo it, it would be probably well taken in the community. Number five. Wow, we only got three slots left for top five on. This is hard um, because a lot of this is like playstyle preference, and uh, uh, or like the character has other options. I'm gonna put. This is tough because now I'm not. I'm not really looking for like the character character, but I am looking for like a multiple use case scenario and why you should or shouldn't. I kind of want to put Summertime Iceria here. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. Maybe I'm not, but let me explain why. She has the only, like, bomber artifact for, like, that is legitly multi-used against a lot. Like, even Captain Flank can use it if you build her on, uh, like, a low crit chance build, right? Uh, her artifact is so valuable. Yes, you need to get multiple copies of it, but it's so good when you build properly on that. Like, whether it's for Captain Flan or for whatever unit it is in the future that they release... If it's a unit that provides bombs and they don't crits, or have a low crit chance so you can build around it, that artifact's just going to be like probably their best in slot as long as they have a single target attack, right? On top of that, she is a premium cleaver uh, when it comes to being on like the rank cleave theme. I still think that team is very relevant and very, very good still to this day. Even with the release to ML Pavel, uh, I do think she's still very, very good and pretty uh, flexible on her build because you don't have to give her crit chance and crit net. It's so all that extra gear that just might have attack, health, and effectiveness. Or speed, attack, health, effectiveness, speed. You can give it to her. She kind of shares the same thing as Hyung. The, for gear, the only difference is she wants effectiveness where Hyung doesn't. So, I don't know. I feel like that's a really cool unit to have in your pocket to build if you want to be more like of a cleaver. Or if you just like the bomb debuff style gameplay. So, I think she might must summon if that's your play style. But that's also personal preference at the end of the day. Uh, going to number six, I'm going to put Edward here. He deserves a spot because he's actually legitly good now. Um, is he broken? Uh, no, he's not broken, but he's very good. The cool thing about Edward and why if, whenever he comes back, you should send for him is one, his artifact is Alencia's best in slot artifact, in my opinion. And any future warrior that they release that is going to be built like similar to Alencia where they do the, the extra attack, that'll probably be their best in slot, which having multiple copies of that artifact is very good. On top of that, I do think uh, Edward is a premium anti-cleave unit for PvP, and he's also very usable in PvE. I use him in PvE, and I think he's very usable, especially if you're newer and you don't really have many fire options. He can definitely take that spot and help you out in PvE content. So, I think he's a premium unit, and I do think, yes, he may not be the most insane unit like Remuro, but I do think he's a very strong unit in the right circumstances 
So I think he's definitely worth a pickup at the end of the day. On top of that, uh, it's Edward and he's kind of cool. So the last spot is kind of a tough one because I feel like there's many units that can get this spot or take this spot and hold this spot strong. But it is going to come down to preference and play style for the last bunch of characters. Uh, Rem is a play style preference character. Uh, Elephant is a last like his play style preference character. Holly Muth is play style. Um, you know, there's so many different ways to like. I, there's so many different units I could throw in this last slot that could definitely be used in many different ways. So I think the one that I want to put up here, just because mainly I think this unit is very very good, is going to be. Hmm, Biken. And the reason why this is is for Banshee. If you if you're a Banshee main, Biken is your dream unit. Like yes, Hall, uh, the normal Unfin uh, is a unit you can use to you know do what she does, but Biken just does it better and easier without the gear restrictions. For that reason, I think just because that she is a, a collab unit that's like special eyes in like Banshee one shot and just Banshee farming in general. This is a unit that everyone should definitely pick up on the return. Uh, because even if you don't plan on doing Banshee now, you might turn into a Banshee main down the road just for a plate style switch up or just for experimenting with different sets. Maybe they buff uh, buff one of the sets like how they did the destruction in there. Maybe they buff the counter set, boost it up to 40. Maybe they buff the lifesteal set. Like You never know what sets they're going to play with. Or nerf and buff just to you know switch up the meta so i do think biken's a must have even if you have infant just because of how valuable she, uh, she is when it comes to the banshee now i do want to add uh and uh I, I talk about the last character set of characters here because i do think every one of these units have reasons to definitely be seven four rather they're strong in pvp or just strong or just fun to play or strong or have good artifacts but these top seven i feel like if they return you should just summon on him just because it's going to help your account overall. Uh, Edward was kind of a questionable one. I think out of all of them, Edward is the one that you might look at and like, why? But the, I, I do think after owning him and saying that he, seeing that his buff did help him a lot, he is very good against cleaving. And I think he deserves the benefit of the doubt that even if he isn't a top tier, top tier, like must slot one unit, that he's very viable still. And I, I do want to put some recognition on Edward. It, it's fair to him. So... Like, oh, like I said, we're going to go ahead and put in optional and artifacts now and explain why I think these characters are either good to go for or might not be necessary. I'm going to just go in order here. Rem. I feel like Rem nowadays is definitely... De you can definitely deal with her. There's many like ways to deal with her. Now, am I saying that she is not a must seven? No. She's definitely usable in multiple parts of the content. You can even throw her up here with uh, Biken, and I'd be fine with it because technically you can use her for Wyvern. Uh, she's just... She's built in a way that is kind of i i don't i don't really know it's not for me and it might not be for you because you don't build speed on her it's kind of strange but she doesn't want speed so she's just easily any spare gear that you have from counter that has zero speed and just high like damage you could throw on her so she is just like a she 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 likes bad gear well i guess bad gear in most cases uh, other units would like prefer speed she doesn't really care about speed but I do think she's, she is a unit you could summon for, or either be a must summon, because she is a unit that you can use for Wyvern. One, uh, Wyvern one shot because of her counters. So I, I should probably throw her in seven just because I think it's fair that since I put Bike in there, I do think it's fair to put her there. It's just you have different units that can do the one shot in Wyvern just as effectively as her, if not better, where Bike is just the best overall at it, right? When it comes to this through and through, Bike is just the best one shot for banshee when it comes to early game and new player like new mid game players though there are other units that they released that help with that it's just bike is just built different uh millum optional i do think she's a really good pvp unit and uh she's worth the mention because of that uh i'm not sure what her artifact does i, I can't remember let's go check if i go to artifacts and i go to millum's it's a five star i'm pretty sure she's a mage um, yeah, what is her artifact doing? So her artifact is when the caster suffers a non-critical hit, it's a 30% chance to counterattack. Kind of like, it's kind of niche, to be honest. Like, there's not many units that purposely want to miss crits. So I it's definitely usable if you want to have a unit designed for purposely countering Summertime Assyria, for the most part. I feel like that's what it's built for, is to help tame that type of unit. But 
never know what units are going to bring in the future that don't crit. So I feel like with eight or with time, that artifact will age better. So right now it's just kind of like, it's interesting to say the least. Uh, it's definitely used for units or teams that have like Deanne on them that can help you not get crit as much, right? So interesting. And she's a good unit overall. Dizzy. I feel like out of all these units, Dizzy is just one that I, I don't think you will ever need. Uh, the only reason that I think you would go for Dizzy is for certain four of the Abyss. But even with just saying that, there's definitely other units that can just do what she does. And you can kind of just find ways around it. For example, 492, Dizzy Specialty. I beat 492 without having to need her uh, just by playing the with different styles and coming up with different strategies. So I don't know if I would recommend Dizzy right now to anyone mainly because i just feel like she, her value is dropping as the game uh goes on because there's just other characters that do what she do but better and also in pvp uh she definitely wants to be like a unit that goes first to apply all those debuffs but she just isn't fast enough to compete with her at slot anymore uh elephant this is a character i almost wanted to put in top seven because i think she's very good uh her artifacts very helpful in a lot of situations and her herself has definitely come back a little bit since Emil Pavel's release because she does pair with him quite well. So that was a unit I almost wanted to put in the top uh, seven. If anything, I would have put her at number six and tied it with Edward. But I'm trying not to like double up. But I do think when this character returns that I will be picking her up personally just because I want her artifacting her. Just in case uh, they release more characters like uh, that pair with her really well. So a unit that's very good. Uh, I still think she's very good. Uh, she just isn't like, oh my god, she's a playstyle preference. Same thing, Jacko. Playstyle preference. She's a very cool unit. Uh, heavily RNG you though. Her artifact's okay. Uh, it's best slotted on her. Uh, the reason why I say she's a uh, pretty solid unit or not a must summon is because she's heavily gated on RNG off her S2. Her S2 makes it to where your back DPS uh, um, will get the buff of Chiron and will have a 25% chance to stun. The issue with that is that it's all RNG, like 25%, even on like a ran. That means you have a, uh, you're flipping the coin four times and you're, you might miss all four units on the stun, or you just might hit one, or you might hit a four. It's just too RNG heavy for RNT, which is probably why she's not as played as much because she's an all, like you either win the game because of her or you lose the game because of her. And I think that's the reason why I can't recommend summoning for her. I do think she's really cool though. I do own her. I did summon for her, but I, I don't, I can't really recommend her because of her S2 being so RNG heavy. However, the rest of her kit is very good. Her ultimate's very powerful, and her her single target, or her S1, is very good. It's just her S2 is, really, is, is what really holds her back from being, like, top, top tier. But that's okay. She's still a good unit. If you like her, pick her up. And she's, she's still a fun unit at the end of the day. Uh, Cerise, a unit that kind of got just replaced by uh, Pyrrha. But... The one thing I will say about Cerise is that her artifact's really, really good on squishy top tier units still to this day. Guiding Light's just a an artifact that's just very helpful when you're trying to utilize maybe like a Landy or something along, that, along those lines that's a Ranger type unit that doesn't want to get attacked or have a chance to not die. I feel like she's a very good uh, unit to summon for because of that. She's also pretty solid herself still. I still think she's still a top, you know, top choice for um, cleave teams because she does forgive herself and, or give invincibility to herself and provide teams with uh, interesting buffs. On top of that, once again, her artifact's top notch, so that's why I'm putting her on the optional or artifact section because her artifact's very good. All the Newton after a buff, I think it's she's definitely better, but I don't think you need her. Uh, if the only reason you get her is because you like the character design, whether it's because of her invasion style play or her, I guess her team buff now. So, yeah, that's why you'd go for her. Um, summertime Charlotte's. Uh, you would summon for her because of her artifacts, pretty much Draco plate for the knights. Uh, moving on to, uh, Luna. Luna is a very interesting one because she's a unit that's also, like, a unit that could use a buff but also doesn't need a buff because she's still solid. She's just a little, she's like Jacko. Her S1 is very RNG heavy because it's depending on how many hits she does. Rather, she's, like, does all the hits. She's very good if she does minimum, does the minimum amount of hits. She's just, eh. Um, but she's very good for Expo, and, uh, once again, you can definitely use her for Wyvern. I, I, she was one of my Wyvern units for a long time, but then eventually I just rebuilt my Sigurd, and, uh, decided Sigurd's just, you know, more reliable. 
but nonetheless, she's still very good. Uh, she can be put on many type of sets, counter set on for expo, um, destruction set for expo. Like there's many different ways you can build her that makes that can make her viable for use. And she's also pretty solid in um, in 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 ancient inheritance. Uh, another game mode that I haven't really mentioned much, but she's she's very good in multiple type of PVE game modes. Uh, her artifact's also pretty awesome. It's the Draco plate, but I don't know if I want to put her in the top seven because like, I feel like there's so many good artifacts now that uh, yes, Draco plate's top tier. You can just literally powder for it and be without Luna, and you'd be okay. Which is why I don't want to put her in top seven because I, I don't feel like you should summon for her for her, but you should summon for her for her artifact. Which is why I think this is the reason why I put her down here instead of in top seven because you don't really need Luna per se. She is very good in like a lot of content. But you want her because her artifact is so good, and you would summon for her because you want as many of those top or many Draco places you can get. Uh, so she's like a unit that I would recommend, like even veterans when she comes back to custom or whenever custom is back, she's a great third option just because her Draco plate's so viable, and that you can chase just multiple copies of Draco plate and never have enough of them, and it would just definitely help out your account. But her herself, I wouldn't say you have to have her. Right, she's not a must-have. The same thing with Fairy Tail Tenebria. This unit has been in discussion for needing a buff, but if you buff her, how would you do it? Because she'd be too strong if you buff her. She's on that borderline of, like, she needs a buff, but how do you buff her without breaking her? Because the health of the game is very important. But her artifact is very usable and very good, so that's the reason why you, you know, summon for her or just powder for her artifact. Because her artifact is a lot of best in slot, or I should say is a best in slot for, you know, a few mages out there that are still meta. And uh, for that reason, I do think she, you know, deserves at least a mention. Because I am mentioning every unit uh, of why you could summon for her. Yeah, she herself is, once again, still very good. But she just isn't, like, ultra meta. So that's why you'd either summon or not summon for her. I would say for like the, a lot of these units on the bottom row, if they have good artifacts, you can safely powder them and be okay without them. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Roy. I think he's just too situationally screwed to be recommended. For me, for me to recommend you to summon him. One, you don't want to go against any ice units. Two, his artifacts kind of like whatever. So like, I feel like overall Roy is just kind of like right now in this current state of like game where he hasn't been buffed or anything. He's just too situationally tricky to utilize. But when you can utilize him, he's very good. It's just when realistically are you ever going to go to a PvP match and not go against the blue unit, right? That's that's what's holding him back. Because if you ask that question, you can probably name five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different blue units that you can just bring into the PvP because they're just very usable or very good, and that just shuts him down, right? Now, if it would, it'd be a different story if it was a different element. I do feel like if you're like trying to argue him into the, if maybe he wasn't fire, but he's fire for obvious reason, uh, or the fire element, there would be ways to use him. Like you can bring him into a uh, green lineup because there's not many that there's not many green meta units there's very few rimaru landy and oh uh, i can't really think of anyone else besides the pavel um that are like meta meta for like being green there's there's more than that i just can't really think of any because they're not really like as popular as the blue units right so i just feel like his elements what holds him back and his restriction to being so weak against ice units is what holds him back on top of that his artifacts are really not that crazy in my opinion so he's just kind of like I don't think you will ever need the must summon Roy unless he gets a buff. So there you guys go. This is going to be the limited um, who to summon for and who is an option to summon for uh, video. I don't want to say all the uh, ones on the optional artifacts are not must summons. I don't want to say they're bad either. I just feel like they're more situationally picked based off what they bring of value with their artifacts and what they bring their value for themselves. For example, uh, this is a unit that I will be summoning when she gets returned. Uh... Elfin. I do like her playstyle, I do like her artifact, and I do think she could have been mentioned in the top 10, or at least number 7, or like 6 or 5, or whatever. She's a unit that's very tricky to really place, because she is just um, a unit that has a tricky kit to really use, and she never had a really good, like, partner, like, a really, really good partner with her, but Pavel is great with her now, so... Uh, so that's the reason why, like, ML Pavel brought a lot of life back into her, so that's why I wanted to mention her, so... Yeah, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you would have recommended anyone else in the top seven or if I missed something that you might can, might want to mention that below for, you know, a top seven pick. I know Milo might be I've talked about a bit because she's very good. I just feel like there's other units that do what she do, 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 can do what she do, right? Or do what she can do. So, I don't know. It's kind of like 
a little bit of bias, but at the same time, I try to keep it as real as, as possible because I didn't summon for Biken and uh, Amelia, so there shouldn't be that much. There shouldn't be that much bias, but still at the same time, there might be a little bit. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and yeah, let me know in the comments below if I missed anything important. You guys have a good one.